So in this lesson, in this section, we're going to be covering managing your Amazon inventory. There is a lot going on here. Your inventory is crucial to your organization, your business, whether it be on Amazon or anywhere else. And so there is a lot to cover here, a lot to understand. This is going to help you scale your business correctly once you fully understand the processes that go into managing your inventory correctly. So let's dive right into it. Here we are on Seller Central and right here at the top, you'll see the inventory drop down. So you'll hover your mouse over that and you will see manage inventory. You'll click on that and it will bring you to a page that looks like this. What we have here, let's go through first and foremost, really right here, the main view. In this section of managing your inventory, we are gonna cover all the hyperlinks up here, um, all the way from all inventory through inventory dashboard. And that's why I say it's very extensive, but it's crucial, absolutely crucial to growing a successful business on Amazon. So back to this view down here, this is essentially where you are able to see all of your inventory except for if you have deleted a listing. So right here, what we have is the status bar, which basically tells you the condition of the listing. It tells you whether the listing is active, meaning you have quantity, inactive, meaning there's no quantity, closed, you close the listing for some reason or another. Uh, there's a lot of different reasons you might wanna close a listing and we'll go deeper into that very shortly. Or if it was blocked, if Amazon blocked the listing because it might have not been complying with Amazon's terms of services. So those are the conditions that you'll find. Then you have an image. This is the main image on the listing page. You have your SKU. I do another lesson on don't SKU your SKU. So it's very important to organize your SKU in a certain manner. If you look here, we have the first four characters are the date this listing was created, followed by the price we paid for it. It's the next four characters, followed by the next character is, or two characters now we use, would be the distributor or supplier initials, and then followed by the item number or the UPC. That way, when it's time to reorder, it's a quick reordering process. We'll go deeper into that and we'll go deeper into either better uh, methods of keeping stock and reordering your products. Listing ID is simply just that, the ID that Amazon gives for your listing. Then you have the product name, which is the title of the product. If you're actually looking at the listing, this is what you would see. Bengay Ultra Strength Pain Relieving Cream, two count, four ounces, box, eight total ounces. So let's take a quick look to verify everything that I'm saying, right? Here's the main image. Here's the description or the title rather. And Bengay Ultra Strength Pain Relieving Cream, two count, four ounce boxes, eight total ounces. And here's that same image we're seeing. Right underneath the product name is the ASIN, the Amazon Standard Identification Number. This is really Amazon's UPC for this listing. This is the way that Amazon identifies a listing. So whenever you have a case that you're creating for a listing or if there's any issues you have with a listing, you're going to provide Amazon with the ASIN so they know which listing it pertains to. Um, another real cool feature with the ASIN in the future is um, the URL. So you see you can find it right here in the URL. And if anytime you want to go to a listing, instead of some people might search in the Amazon search bar, you could simply go forward slash DP forward slash and you paste the ASIN in and it brings you right to the page. Uh, once you start sourcing, once we go into sourcing correctly and, and purchasing products, that is a time saver. The next column is your date created column. Right under that is the status change date. And the date created is the day you created and time, the SKU that pertains to that listing for that ASIN. 
right under that is the status change date, which means any changes that happen to that listing or the SKU for that listing for that ASIN, whether that change be a price change, a quantity change, maybe the product was damaged in their Amazon Fulfillment Center, maybe you had a sale, but anytime there is any change to your stock, or your inventory of that SKU for that listing, for that ASIN, that change is timestamped right here where it says status change date. Here you have the available amount, how many we have in stock, whether this is merchant fulfilled or Amazon fulfilled because we are looking at manage inventory, which is all of our inventory. There is another section in the dropdown called Manage FBA Inventory, which would just strictly pertain to Amazon FBA products that are fulfilled by Amazon. But Manage Inventory is all of your inventory in one place. Great view for taking a quick look and, and finding any issues or finding any anything that you need to correct at the time or just kind of going over the health of your inventory. So we have the available is how many we have in stock of this product. So I wanted to pause that for a second just to give you a little bit more insight into this available column and what's going on here. If you're unfamiliar, available refers to how much quantity is currently listed of that ASIN. For instance, this seller right here of this Nike Roche, they only have one in stock currently, so their available count would be one. And if you went back to manage inventory and you click this drop down, you get further insight into everything else that's happening, including research and in stock head start. And don't worry, we're gonna touch on that in just a few. We have the inbound, which is how many are being sent to Amazon. We have the unfulfillable, which could be any products that might have been damaged or are expiring or Amazon has decided that they are defective. So that would put them in the unfulfillable category and we go into the topic of how to handle those a little bit later, right? Right now we'll stick it to manage inventory and the last would be reserved. And when you do have reserved amounts, basically first and foremost is reserved would be if a product is in transition or a product has been sold. And when it's in transition, it means it's being moved from one fulfillment center to another fulfillment center. This is the way that Amazon is able to handle the one to two day prime promise and ensure that their logistics are right on target and the needs are being met of the customer. So because of that, about 30% of our inventory at any given time is in transition between one facility to another facility. I just wanted to pause this for one second and chime in here a little bit further on reserved. So if we take a look at this uh, Sweet Leaf Stevia Extract Clear Liquid 4 ounce listing, and we move to the right, we'll see we have 23 reserved. Right next to that number 23 on the right is a down arrow. If I click that arrow, it gives me a little bit more information about exactly what's going on here with this listing where I have 23 units um, reserved. So you see customer orders, it's zero of those reserved are orders because when a customer does place an order based on the quantity they order, that quantity will be reserved. The next reserved would be for transfers. When Amazon gets your product at a fulfillment center, they typically distribute it then again to about 12 fulfillment centers depending on how much quantity you sent in and the reason for that is just for the network for one to two day shipping as I mentioned before and typically when it's being transferred it takes about three to eleven days to go from one fulfillment center to the next and be checked in. Unfortunately if you do not have any available at the time and the, the, the remainder of your units are being transferred, uh, the listing is gonna show as back ordered. Like here, let's take a quick look. If you look here, we are at 41.99, and even though we have 20 in stock, they are reserved and we have zero available. Remember what I said about available, that's how many you have 
for sale at the time. We have zero available because our units are being either transferred or processed, and therefore you see this back ordered due in stock. So if we come back here, the last piece of this puzzle is the FC processing, and that means these units have now been received at a fulfillment center, that's what the FC stands for, and then they are being checked in. They are being processed, the cartons are being opened, the uh, staff is scanning them in, and that should take you know less than a day, sometimes a day to two days max, depending on what time of the season it is, and obviously how busy that fulfillment center is. So that's all I have to say about reserve. Let's get back to the rest of this. Your inventory quantity view, I call it, because it shows you the quantity you have in your own uh, warehouse or home or wherever you're doing business from, and Amazon's is you see how these boxes aren't editable. They're not editable uh, because these are FBA listings. If they were not FBA listings, you would be able to edit the quantity you have in stock. So it would say zero, but you could click on the box and change it to whatever number you have. So next thing we have our fee preview. The fee preview is a combination of your referral fee and your fulfilled by Amazon fees. So that combination is where you get the top number and right underneath it breaks it down and actually gives you the FBA fee. So the referral fee would be based on the price you last had the product. And so at 21.42, 42 15% uh, of that plus the FBA fee would give us the 6.49. Next over here we have the business price, which I break down in more detail in a further lesson in this manage inventory segment that we're going through right here. And the business price is so crucial to understand. You really gotta understand your numbers. Here it is an opportunity to sell more volume by offering a discount. And you could discount by percent or dollar amount, but please know that the fastest growing portion by percentage of Amazon is not AWS. It's not just Amazon.com, but if you break it down, it's their actual B2B sales. That is their fastest growing, and they believe it's going to continue in that trajectory for the next two years. So... I think you really should be paying attention to this because you better bet that we are. The next piece you want to look at is lowest price plus shipping. Lowest price is the lowest offer on this listing right now. So the lowest offer is at $13.13 and that is $0 shipping. And if you want to know who it's being fulfilled by, that would be over here. We're going to look at that. But let's go quickly look at this listing to see what's happening here. So the lowest price is $13.13. So here we go. The buy box is suppressed. That's why this looks different. Don't worry. We touch on what that means. So let's click on that. And here you go. The lowest price being offered is $13.13. There it is, and that's exactly what it shows in here in your inventory view. Next piece we wanna look at is sales rank. Sales rank is how popular the product is based on its category. So for this product, it is the 57,066th best health and personal care product. Now based on how well the others are moving, you can make an estimated guess on how well this moves. Buy box price plus shipping would be the buy box price. But as we looked before, remember, this listing doesn't have a buy box, it's suppressed. Amazon suppresses buy boxes when they deem that the price is not worthy to the consumer. It's not a value, rather, I should say. That means maybe they see it on walmart.com or they found it on another website for cheaper or maybe they have another listing of this exact same product for another ASIN that's of a more valuable price. So the algorithm decides that, hey, this isn't a value, so we're going to suppress the buy box, remove the buy box, which really impacts the SEO and how well this product moves. And... Now, this will tell you if we are buy box eligible. And what this is, is it's telling us whether the price that we're at right now makes us eligible for the buy box. Meaning that as Amazon's algorithm decides who's gonna have the buy box when, what percentage of time that seller is going to have it, are you even eligible to be in that raffle? 
and this will tell you whether you are or not. Obviously for this one, we're not because we don't have any stock. So there you go. And then we have our FN SKU. That's the Fulfillment Network SKU. So basically what this is, it's a combination of the ASIN and your seller ID. So that combination put together is where Amazon creates this unique FN SKU, which when you put this label on your product before you ship it to Amazon FBA fulfillment centers, um, it's going to signify to Amazon, hey, this product belongs to this seller and it's for this ASIN. It's the way that they track your products and they do a really good job considering how large and vast they are. And then the next section will be fulfilled by, which is another way of showing us whether the product is being fulfilled by Amazon or whether when we're selling this inventory, we are fulfilling it ourselves or otherwise known as merchant fulfilled. So there's one way of doing it, which would be if this available is editable or looking over here and seeing fulfilled by. Right here we have the minimum maximum price. Uh, so basically Amazon in the past year has created the capability of using Amazon as a repricer. If you're new to Amazon, I would say this is where you start. This is where you begin to learn how prices fluctuate, how your price fluctuates and how it's going to impact uh, the amount of sales you get. So you would put in your minimum price here, which is the absolute lowest you're willing to sell the product for and then you put your maximum, which is the absolute highest you're going to sell this product for. And Amazon would fluctuate the price based on the environment of that ASIN and listing. Uh, later on, we'll go into other third-party softwares, which I feel have a lot more capability uh, to price your product more correctly and help you that kind of really squeeze those margins and get as much profit as you can while staying consistent with sales. The last piece of this view is the edit button. And this is essentially a way to edit the listing. So this is your view. Basically everything that I showed you here is the entire option that Amazon has for manage inventory, all the columns that are available. Um, you can change those options by looking at right here where it says preferences and this is where you can view the columns that you want to display and filter which ones you want displayed or not. Currently, we've been showing you all the column options. However, that is not the way that we operate. Um, it's just that it's too much data. Uh, and it kind of gets in the way of really looking at the ins essential information that's needed. So let's go from top to bottom and show you what we use as a company uh, when we're viewing our managed inventory. Status. We always want to know the status of an ASIN, especially if there's any issues, we'll be able to tell here. An image is a quick reference point. We keep that as well. The SKU, we always keep that. We do not use the listing ID. That's not needed. Product name, ASIN, it is recommended and we also keep it. Uh, the date created, status change, we keep that as well. Our availability, we keep that. Whether it is inbound or not, we do want to display that, so we do show that. Unfulfillable we show, as well as reserved. The estimated fee per unit we also keep. The price, of course, is essential, and so is the business price, the lowest price. The sales rank we don't keep here. When we need to view our products, if we're not using our own software, we're viewing it on Amazon, and if we're viewing it on Amazon, we're using the third-party Keepa software. So we're going to remove that. Um, the buy box price. Listen, if you are not using a repricer, I would recommend leaving the current buy box price here. However, with us having a repricer, we remove that from the manage inventory. Buy box eligible is the same. If you are not using a repricer and you're doing your repricing through Seller Central, I would recommend keeping the buy box eligible. However, if 
you are using a repricer, you can remove that, so we're gonna remove that. The FN SKU, we do not need to have that here, so we remove that as well. A filled by, now you could leave that here, however, it's not needed. Remember when we were looking at the available column or the quantity column, if the quantity column is an input box, meaning it's editable and you can change the quantity, well that tells you that it's FBM. If it's not editable, then it's FBA, so we don't need this. Minimum price, maximum price, we do want to keep that here just in case there's any pricing alerts, pricing errors where we need to use these boxes, we'll have them there. And the UPC EIN we can remove. So here's your essential column displays that you want to have uh, when you're viewing your ASINs through the Manage Inventory view. Here you could also sort. You could sort it ascending by SKU, A to Z by title, date, inventory, inbound inventory, unfulfillable, reserved, the price, or fulfilled, whether it's Amazon fulfilled FBA or merchant fulfilled FBM. Uh, the way that we like to do it is we like to do um, start date and we actually do new to old, which is recommended. This allows us to just view the newest ASINs that are being created, ensuring they're accurate, knowing where we are with our newest catalog products, making sure where we're pricing those products, making sure they're priced correctly before they become available on Amazon. The edit button, it's really a preference point whether you want it all the way to the right or left, we keep it to the right. Display shipping charges in your inventory's pricing column. Absolutely, we want to display that. Complete catalog, so if you don't want, you can only look at active or inactive, but I want the complete catalog if any ASIN becomes inactive and we have quantity available in an Amazon fulfillment center, I want to know that. And same thing goes with fulfillment channels, unless you're only using one fulfillment channel, but then if you're only using one, then what's the, what's the necessity for filtering it? So I would leave it as all fulfillment channels. And then the number of results per page, we have it at 50, however, you can bring it all the way up to 250 and Amazon says 25 is recommended. Uh, once again, these are all real preference points, except for, I would say, the fulfillment channels, the complete catalog, and the rest is up to you. However, I told you why we do sorting order as the start date, because we want to see the newest ASINs added to our catalog to ensure they're being priced correctly and everything looks up to par the way that it needs to be for that new listing. Once it's created, once we have availability in Amazon, and once we see it's selling correctly, we could kind of set it and forget it. Uh, just going back, making sure velocity and profits are meeting our expectations. And then the show shipping charges, it's recommended. I mean, if you don't want to show the shipping charges that Amazon's going to be charging you for the product, you don't have to, but I think that would be a foolish decision, so I'd recommend keeping that. Uh, and then your low price comparison. Uh, when you see the lowest price offer, on an ASIN all the way to the right there, who's got the lowest price. Do you want to see uh, all products? Do you want to see uh, used products as well? For us, we want to just see items in the same condition. We sell new products and we only want to be competitive against sellers that are also selling new conditioned items listings with all fulfillment methods or listing with the same fulfillment. So if you're selling FBA, do you also want to see merchant fulfilled? I do because at a certain price point, that merchant fulfilled seller is buy box eligible, might even have the buy box. So I want to see uh, all fulfillment methods. And then listings from sellers with any feedback rating? Yes, I don't care if that person has zero feedback. If that seller, has the buy box right now, I wanna know about it, and so I wanna see that low price comparison there. And same thing goes with handling time. So once we have all of this set to our liking, this we can set it and forget it, don't have to go back to this. We save the changes and that's it. Uh, we could also set different filters. Right, so we could search uh, search by a certain date, we could search by a certain price. And the other thing that we could also do here is we could look at only Amazon Fulfilled, or we could look at only Merchant Fulfilled. 
Uh, we could look at listings that have been removed, which is zero. Um, then we have our incompletes, listings that we haven't finished creating. Maybe we were planning to sell it and then, uh, or maybe we were just kind of doing some research, seeing if it was hazmat, but we never finished creating these listings. If we needed to and we were going to sell them, then of course we would. We have our inactives, which are typically inactive because we don't have any in stock. If there is any inactives and we do have them in stock, we need to look into that. And then we have back to the active, which are our active listings, and then our all, which is the entirety of all our listings. And that's kind of what we were um, looking at before with, with this view right here. One more thing that we could do in this view is if we go back to preferences, we could change the sorting. So we can sort by SKU, we could sort by the date of creation of the product, by the title A to Z, Z to A, by inventory quantity, by inbound inventory, unfulfillable, reserved, uh, price low to high, or fulfilled by Amazon then followed by fulfilled by merchant or vice versa. So lots of ways, this is basically setting up the default of how you wanna sort it. Then you have how many number of results do you want per page? They say 25, we keep it at 50. Obviously when you get to 100 or 250 SKUs on a page, it kind of slows down uh, the process of uploading the page. So we keep it at 50, it doesn't seem to impact us. Then you have uh, filter options, you could only look at your active listings if you want. You could you could filter by inactive in here, but did, remember, this is setting your default. I would keep the default always as your complete catalog. So down here, we're setting defaults while up in the last page before when we were looking at inactives or closed or active, we were just quickly filtering and we could quickly filter back. This is setting up our defaults. So basically for us, the default that we like to keep it at is our newest SKUs, uh, are the first ones that we see. Uh, our edit buttons to the right, you could switch it to the left if you like. We uh, display shipping charges in our inventory's price columns as you saw there. Uh, we show the complete catalog. We show all fulfillment channels, meaning both Amazon fulfilled and merchant fulfilled. We have 50 results per page. Uh, for low price comparisons, we like to look at listings in the same condition, meaning that um, when we saw that lowest price offer, we didn't want to see the lowest price offer if that person was selling used products. We're only selling new products, so we only want to look at the lowest price offer if somebody's selling in the new condition. And we're looking at listings with all fulfillment methods when it comes to the lowest price, just because we want to see what the lowest price is. I don't want to just see Amazon fulfilled lowest price because it might be $2, $3 higher than somebody's that's merchant fulfilled. And all of a sudden I think, wow, that price isn't low. And maybe I'm thinking about restocking it only to find out that, wow, there was somebody selling it MFN or merchant fulfilled and they were three, two, two, three dollars less. And at two, three dollars less, we're not making money. So I look at worst case scenario and I show all fulfillment methods and I show the lowest price. And I show from listings with sellers with any feedback, but you can switch it up if you like, and you can look at similar or higher feedback ratings. And then handling time too, uh, I do any. I don't care if it's two, three, four, five days. I wanna be worst case scenario. Show me the worst thing that's happening on this listing right now, the, 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 as far as it comes to pricing. The absolute lowest price is what I wanna see as long as it's in new condition, because I know nobody's gonna wanna buy a used pair of supplements or used pair of shoes or any of the categories that we handle in Amazon, so. Amazon's not eBay, this is all about new condition products. So I saved those changes and I'm done with my manage inventory, here we go. So what we're gonna go over now is go a little bit further into manage inventory. Like I said before, there's a ton of information in manage inventory, which you need to learn and then capitalize on to make sure you understand the fundamentals and all the techniques behind Seller Central. 